cells are categorized as being either prokaryotic or eukaryotic. All eukaryotic cells share certain features, such as the presence of a nucleus and other membrane-enclosed organelles, which are not found in prokaryotic cells. Examples of eukaryotes include plants, animals, fungi, and protists. Let's start by looking at organelles that are common to all eukaryotic cells. The nucleus is bound by a double membrane known as the nuclear envelope and is sometimes referred to as a control center of the cell because it houses most of the cell's DNA. Within the nucleus is the nucleolus, the site of ribosome synthesis. Ribosomes are the protein factors of the cell, and in addition to being found in all eukaryotic cells, they're also present in prokaryotic cells. Ribosomes can be found suspended in the cytosol of the cell or bound to the side of the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. The ER, the Golgi apparatus, and the nuclear envelope are all part of the cell's endomembrane system, a system of membranes suspended within eukaryotic cells which helps to divide the cell into functional compartments. The ER is referred to as rough ER if it is studded with ribosomes or smooth ER if it has no ribosomes on its surface. One of the main functions of the rough ER is to make secretory proteins, such as insulin, which is made in pancreatic cells. The smooth ER carries out a number of functions, including the synthesis of lipids and the detoxification of poisons. Moving on to the Golgi apparatus, which is also part of the endomembrane system, this organelle works very closely with the ER. It receives molecules from the ER and modifies these by attaching chemical markers to them. These markers act as address labels, directing molecules to the correct destination. Because of this function, the Golgi apparatus is sometimes described as being the post office of the cell. Peroxisomes are small, membrane-enclosed organelles that are found in virtually all eukaryotic cells. They contain enzymes that are involved in many different metabolic reactions. For example, in plants, they convert stored fatty acids into sugars. And in animals, they are the site of cholesterol synthesis. Often called the power plant of eukaryotic cells, a mitochondrion is an organelle that changes energy from food into ATP, a form of energy that the cell can use by the process of cellular respiration. A mitochondrion has a smooth outer membrane and an inner membrane that is highly folded. Mitochondria also have their own DNA and can replicate independently of the cell's replication. In addition to these organelles, all eukaryotic cells also possess a cytoskeleton, a network of protein fibers that runs through the cytoplasm, which among other things helps to maintain the cell's shape. This is especially important for animal cells as they lack a cell wall. Let's take a look now at some organelles that are exclusive to plant cells. Unlike animal cells, plant cells are generally rectangular in shape and tend to be larger than animal cells. This rectangular shape is due to the presence of a cell wall, which is not found in animal cells. Cell walls are made of cellulose, a tough material that, in addition to maintaining the cell's shape, provides protection to the cell and the plant as a whole. In addition to mitochondria, plants possess an additional energy processing organelle, the chloroplast, which is the site of photosynthesis. Chloroplasts have a smooth outer membrane and groups of stacked membrane sacs with chlorophyll, the pigment that makes leaves green and that absorbs light required for photosynthesis to take place. Chloroplasts, like mitochondria, have their own DNA and can replicate independently of the cell's replication. The central vacuole is a membrane-bound sac, much like a bubble, that stores nutrients and waste products in plant cells. In addition to its role as a storage compartment, its other main role is to maintain turgor pressure, which is important to help keep plant stems and branches rigid. Some animal cells contain cilia or flagella, structures that are anchored in the cell membrane and which are composed of microtubule proteins, an important component of the cytoskeleton. Flagella are thin, whip-like tails that assist cells in their movement. A sperm cell, for example, has a flagellum to enable it to move in its fluid environment. 
Cilia are tiny hair-like structures found on the surface of the cells lining the human respiratory tract, where they help remove debris from the lungs. Another structure that is composed of microtubules and is not found in higher plants is the centrosome. These structures play a role in cell division as they organize the microtubules that separate chromosomes during cell division. The final organelle that we're going to look at today is the lysosome, a small enzyme-filled sac. Lysosomes fuse with vacuoles that contain material derived from within the cell, such as damaged organelles. Once the membranes fuse, the contents of the vacuoles are exposed to the enzymes in the lysosome and they're degraded. The components can then be reused by the cell. The lysosome is sometimes referred to as the garbage disposal of the cell.